Hey, everybody. So as you read in the title, fiber causes cancer. Yes, you read that right. And I'm going to share my screen so I can show you the evidence for that. So as you can see, there are two studies that I'm going to link here in the description box. Whenever I talk about studies, always just drop to the description box if you want to learn more about that, because I, I always link them. So the first study is, this is the title, Fermentable Fiber-Induced Hepatocellular Carcinoma in Mice Recapitulates Gene Signatures Found in Human Liver Cancer. Okay, so that's a lot of stuff just to say that a certain type of fiber that's fermentable, specifically inulin, has been shown consistently to induce liver cancer in mice. And it seems that genetic code of those mice are very applicable to humans. And so the results seem to be applicable to humans. And so that just happened, that was published in 2019. So it's very recent. It was very exciting for them to um, discover that they can induce cancer, liver cancer in mice on demand just by feeding them that fiber. But at the same time, it's alarming given that everybody thinks that fiber is healthy and all of the dietitians and health experts of the world are telling us to eat more fiber. And so they focused on inulin. That was what they used. And the problem with inulin is that it's found in the vast majority of protein bars and foods on the market. And people are trying to get healthier that are eating those kinds of foods or they're not realizing how much inulin they're getting exposed to. Inulin is a fermentable fiber, meaning that it feeds bacteria in your gut and those bacteria start to produce short chain fatty acids, a kind of fat um, that seems, the consensus seems to be that that's a good kind of fat, but apparently maybe it's good in one area, but the end result is negative because it's going to induce some form of cancer. And you can still get those short chain fatty acids. You can still get those kinds of fats just by being in ketosis and not eating carbohydrates anyway. And so when you hear people saying, is it really that it's meat that rots <laughs> in our colon? It's like, is it, does it really rot? I mean, how could it rot when we absorb it all? How can anything that is absorbed from my digestive system almost fully rot? Whereas a thing that by definition cannot be digested, which is fiber. Isn't that the thing that is supposed to rot? Because we literally cannot manage it. We can't digest it. And so we have to rely on our bacteria in our gut to get rid of it. So um, this study showed that inulin increased or basically induced liver cancer. They called that hepatocellular carcinoma um, consistently in the mice. And hepatocellular carcinoma is the fourth most prevalent cause of cancer mortality globally. It's pretty bad. And um, this is what the authors say they, as they're writing their article. They're saying it must be cautioned that purified and refined dietary fibers such as inulin are widely marketed as beneficial supplements. That's true. Where the U.S. FDA has recently approved the labeling of inulin in rich foods as health promoting. The conclusion of that article, what did the authors conclude? They said that the liver cancer incidence has been continuing to increase for the past couple of decades. And while this is reported to be largely to, due to viral infection, refined fermentable fibers may be another unknown risk factor. So they're saying it could be that the reason why liver cancer is growing is because we're eating more refined fermentable fibers. Oh, okay, another study. Um, the title is pharmacological, is this, let me actually open the other study. I have it open here somewhere. It's called dysregulated microbial fermentation of soluble fiber induces cholestatic liver cancer. So again, those are also the same authors. Um, and this is the initial article they published where they showed that um, liver cancer was consistently induced by feeding them inulin. So in this second study, they say that if you inhibit the fermentation of the bacteria, if you stop the bacteria's ability to um, feed on the fiber and create um, short chain fatty acids as a result, that will prevent liver cancer. And let me show you the graph. Here it is. Make it a little bit bigger and move me to the side. So you can see here, you eat this is, this is how it happens. You eat the fiber like inulin. Um, it's also, inulin, by the way, is found in Jerusalem artichokes and um, a, bunch, a bunch of veggies. Like you want to look that up. You eat those kinds of fibers 
or you eat a protein bar, lots of them have a lot of that. Also, um, a lot of bars have other kinds of fermentable fibers like polydextrose. I just realized that um, Quest bars, I was looking at it and it's like, wait a second, they have fermentable fibers there. And it would be interesting to see if the polydextrose functions in the same way as inulin because it's still a fermentable fiber. So if inulin is, is, is leading to liver cancer, I wonder what the polydextrose is gonna lead to. So um, you eat the fiber, plus if you have unregulated bacteria, so you're not, you're not necessarily in the optimal health, so you don't necessarily have the best uh, probiotics in your gut. This leads to fermentation, right? The, because you cannot um, handle the fiber, by definition, we can break it up. And so the bacteria breaks it up for us, and that's the fermentation process, and that leads to liver cancer. Okay, so the, what was the author's conclusion? Thus, it's benefits not with Tani. I love how they keep mentioning like the, like let's put the benefits on this side for a second. Enrichment of foods with fermentable fiber should be approached with great caution as it may increase risk of hepatocellular carcinoma. Again, they're warning us, pay attention, we should really be careful about the amount of fiber that we're eating, specifically if we're eating inulin. And I would venture that if we, we actually start conducting those studies that look at other kinds of fiber, whether they or not they increase cancer, I have a feeling that we're going to find a lot of alarming <laughs> results. But that's the problem is that most researchers, it's, it's almost taboo to even mention that fiber could be so terrible for you because it's because it's always the same hypothesis, right? When they're conducting their studies, it's like, it must be good. So let's let's create a study where we can kind of see how, how fiber has improved the health of our patients. And we really need um, to start hypothesizing the complete opposite. Alrighty, I hope this was helpful and I will see you in the next one.